Hey, Jeff from Become More Compelling here, and welcome to another episode of Compelling Convos. I am super excited about our topic today. I've got my co-host up here on the couch, napping away. We're gonna talk about networking. So if you've ever gone to a networking event, you handed out your business card. It feels like American Psycho. It's like, oh look, his has bone. His is embossed. It doesn't have to be that way. We're gonna cover six ways for you to be a better networker. You're gonna wanna stick around to the end of the episode because I'm gonna break down a message that someone sent me last week that resulted in hopping on a Zoom call this week. I'll break it down line by line and show you what worked so that you can get that coffee meeting or you can have that Zoom call with that person that you know could move your business or your career forward faster. Let's dive in. Okay, our first tip, and this is super, super important, is get clear on what you want. So many times I see people who are, you know, they want to network but they are reaching out to people that have nothing to do with what they want to do because they don't know what they want to do. And that is a recipe for nothing good. For example, if you want to be a creative director at an ad agency, you want to channel your inner Don Draper, you want uh, two scotch lunches, whatever it happens to be, well, would you reach out to people in the healthcare industry? Probably not. You might reach out to people in the advertising industry, the marketing industry. That's your bread and butter. Those are the people that you should reach out to. That makes it super clear. Like, look, I'm not interested in everyone I could reach out to. I'm only interested in the small sliver of people who have jobs that I might wanna one day have. If you reach out to those creative directors and ask them what their path was, before they became a creative director, that gets you a little bit of a path forward and it gets you more information about where you wanna be. Tip number two, give and don't keep score. Adam Grant is the author of the phenomenal book, Give and Take. And in that book, he outlines a few different types of people, givers, takers, matchers. And so matchers, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Takers, look, whatever you got, I'm gonna get it. I language instead of we language. And givers, they tend to give a lot and they're very generous and they're very abundant mindset. The downside of being a giver is you can be a doormat if you're not careful, but I've got a video on people pleasing that I will link somewhere around. It's important to to realize if you're reaching out to, to someone and you are asking something of them, so you're asking for that 15 minute phone call, you're asking for that piece of advice, that is taking, right? So that is saying, hey, you have something that I want, I'm gonna take something from you. Granted, it's not that overt, but at the end of the day, that's really what it is because you're asking for time, you're asking for mental resources. So keep that in mind when you're reaching out to that person, especially if they're busy, they don't have a whole lot of time or effort to give someone that they don't know. And don't worry, we are gonna cover with that script breakdown towards the end of the video, we'll cover an easy organic way to make that ask a little easier. But the big thing is you wanna give in the beginning. Like if someone's reaching out to me and they've read, read a blog post of mine, then that is a marker. They're like, hey, they took action. They read something of mine. I really appreciate that. If you're reaching out to someone who maybe they're a CEO of a company that you might wanna work for, like doing a little bit of research into that company is a very good idea. A busy person's nightmare is getting an email or a DM from someone with a vague ask or a question that they could have easily answered on Google. Think about it, if you got an email or a DM that seems like it was sent by someone who views you as the last glass of water in the desert and they're asking for something really vague or they ask a question that could have really easily been answered if they'd spent five minutes Googling it, what does that make you wanna do? It might make you feel like you don't wanna answer them or throw your computer in a lake. Contrast that with a message that is well thought out. It shows that the person has done a little bit of research and it shows that the person understands that that person's time is valuable. That's a completely different feeling message. That's a completely different feeling vibe from that person. Tip number three, ask for what you want. Make sure it benefits both of you. Most people fear rejection, so they either don't ask for something or they kind of vaguely, passively bring up what they want. Like, oh yeah, maybe we can, maybe there's a way we could help each other and hope the other person takes the lead. Like, look, both of those are losing strategies. You need to be strong in what you're asking for and be specific. Now, it is important that you give before you ask for anything, but when you do ask, be strong about it. Ask your ask. And it's really important to be specific. Lead with why it could benefit that person. So if someone wanted to get hired by me, 
and they just said, hey, I really need a job. Uh, okay, what can you bring to the table? Like, if they came to me and was like, hey, you know what, I've seen this issue that you, that you might have, I can solve it in these three different ways. That is a sign of a top performer and someone that I at least wanna have a conversation with. Showing that you've done some work, showing that you put some thought into that ask is really powerful. And it's powerful because a lot of people just don't do it. So it's easy to stand out by just doing a little bit extra. And if you don't know how you could help that company, so you could reach out to someone at the company, you could do some research on your own, being able to dig deeper instead of just throwing up your hands and saying, well, I don't even know how I might help. Like, no, create your next job. Dive deep into what needs that company might have. You might be right, you might be wrong, but showing initiative, especially like if you're going on a job interview um, or you're trying to sign a client, whatever it happens to be, that is super crucial because it shows that you put in the work and that you're serious and that you've come ready to play. Okay, now we are going to do a script breakdown. So I'm gonna show you the message that got me on a Zoom call last week. And I've sent a similar version of this message because we're gonna talk about the core concepts that make it work. I've sent a version of this message in the past to people uh, like CEOs of companies, people that I wanted to do a collaboration with. And it works really, really well. And I'm gonna show you why. Hi Jeff, I read your 33 lessons post and really resonated with number 31. Be yourself is misguided advice. So right here in the first paragraph, they've already hooked me because it shows that they have taken the initiative and they've read something that I've written. And so that immediately makes me think, oh, well, this person actually read something. I also took your communication style quiz from your website and discovered that I'm a thinker and can resonate with a lot of the custom report. Side note, shameless plug, if you wanna find out what communication style you have, I've got a link in the description where you can go take that very same quiz, or you can just go to becomemorecompelling.com. They're already putting in a little bit of effort, and in real minutes and seconds, this took less than five or 10 minutes. Currently, I'm making my way through Remit Sethi's earnable course, and I saw that you are a graduate of his. There, we have a mutual connection, and that is a great way. Like, look, you may not have a mutual connection with everybody on earth. Maybe you could just say, hey, I know Kevin Bacon, or I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who knows Kevin Bacon. You may not have that connection, but if you do have any sort of connection with the person you're reaching out to, might be a mutual friend, you might live in the same city, you might be in the same industry, key into that. And so anything that you can pull on to say, hey, we know X, Y, Z, or we're both, we both attended this school. Anything that shows any kind of common connection is a really good thing to include in a message. I'd love to get your advice on starting your own business for 15 to 20 minutes. I'm currently working on something. This is also really good. Can you tell me why? 15 to 20 minutes. That's a pretty low stakes ask. They're not saying, hey, can we hop on a call with no defined end time? A call until like I die of starvation? busy person's nightmare. Do you think I could pick your brain on your journey would become more compelling? I'd, li I'd like to know how you did your market research and got your first clients. So here they're asking for something really specific. And in this paragraph, I want you to key in on the first line. I'd like to pick your brain. Now, most people would just stop there. Hey, I would love to pick your brain for 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, you know, it's still probably a no. And the reason why would be because it's not specific. But here, this person lists two specific things that they would like to know more about. From my perspective, this says, hey, you know what? Yeah, I know the answer to these two questions. I could probably help this person out. It's not vague, it's specific, and that is so important. And then the final paragraph here, we've got a couple of times. So that is also really good. It gives me an option of A or B. The key points in this message lead with something that is uh, complimentary, shows that you've done a little bit of research, because I'm here to tell you people, it's shocking how many times people just don't even bother and it crushes my soul a little bit every time. So lead with something that shows that you've done a little bit of research. If you have any common connections, call those out. Say, hey, I only wanna get on a call for 15 minutes. That's a low, a low barrier ask or I have a specific question that I wasn't able to solve. It, anything like that is good. And then if you go with the phone call, then hey, here are a couple of times that I'm available. Overall, I give this message a A+. Uh, it worked because I messaged this person and I was like, hey, sounds good, pick a time here. And I linked them to my Calendly. So that is a really good example of a script that you could use. Now you don't have to use this exact script. I would advise you not to use this exact script. Think of your own, 
But when you have that person that you wanna reach out to, having that general framework is gonna be super helpful to you. Next tip, circle back. So after you have that call, say that that CEO tells you, hey, yeah, you should read this book, read the book, do what they recommend, and then circle back to them and say, hey, you know what? I read that book and, and I, it was great. Here are a couple of my takeaways from it. So that is adding value by itself and saying, hey, I took action on that thing that you told me to do. It is so rare. Guys, if I can give you one piece of advice is follow through and circle back. Most people don't do it, so you can stand out by being the exception to the rule. It's also a good way to leave the door open for future conversations. In the four hour work week, I remember Tim Ferriss saying, I think he had reached out to an author. He said, hey, would it be okay if I reach out to you with a very seldomly with a question here or there? And the author was like, yeah, sure. And this brings us to our last tip, network before you need it. Build those relationships before you need them. Most people make the mistake of maybe they want to switch jobs or maybe they need to drum up sales for their business. So they think, all right, now's the time I need to network. And then, you know, they get on the phone or start, start sending DMs. Well, you know what? That's not the best time to do it. The best time to do it is before you need it. I'm a big believer in habits and making behavior super simple. So what I'd recommend to you is once a week, just reach out to one person, one extra person that you weren't planning on reaching out to. Uh, I actually have linked below a spreadsheet that I created that will give you a few different touches that you can uh, say, hey, I, I sent this person an email, I jumped on a call with them, whatever it happens to be. And you can track that and so you kind of know like, oh, it's been a little bit since I reached out to this person or that person. So build it into your week. And so next time you really do need to pull on those connections, it's not a big deal. You don't have to start from scratch because you've been doing it all along. Best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. So if you haven't networked a whole lot in the past, start doing it now and your career or your business could be in a completely different place all right, that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. A couple of different ways you can reach me if you want to suggest a topic for a future episode. One, you can hit me up on Instagram or Twitter at the Jeff Callahan with two L's. Two, you can send me an email at jeff at becomemorecompelling.com or three, just drop a comment below and tell me what you want me to cover on a future episode. Talk soon. Hey, a couple of quick things before you leave. One, I've got a subscribe button over here. If you like this video and you don't wanna miss out on a future video, hit that subscribe button. Two, if you uh, like this video, hit the like button. That helps other awesome people like you find it. And three, leave a comment if you have any feedback for me or if you have a topic or suggestion that you want me to cover in a future video. Thanks.